and uh, welcome back. This will be my final video of the day before I go grab some dinner. Um, so what we'll do in this video is talk about carbonic anhydrase. And recall that general reaction for carbonic anhydrase was we started with a proton. Recall that it was in the hydronium form and we threw it in with some bicarbonate, right? Initially we formed H2CO3 carbonic acid and that dissociated to CO2 and water. Okay, now the mechanism that we're gonna look at in this video is going this direction, okay? From CO2 and water to H2CO3, okay? Now, the reason we're doing this is because it's good to get exposed to organic mechanisms, biochemistry, uh, very quickly because um, some, a lot of times when you get to metabolic pathways, it's really good to understand what the enzymes are doing through their mechanism, because then you cease to be memorizing, you'll remember it more easily for the exam, and you'll also probably remember it after the class is over. Most people who just memorize, learn it for an exam, maybe they don't even learn it at all, and then they get done with the exam and they forget it. Then it comes time for the final exam, and then you're forced to relearn everything. So if you understand, what the enzymes are doing, it's a lot easier, okay? And so we're gonna be running the direction from CO2 to water, okay? Now, recall that, um, recall that um, for this uh, pathway, um, if I wanted to lower pH, what am I gonna to have to do? Well, I'm gonna to have to raise the concentration of H3O plus. Right? I'm going to have to raise the concentration of hydronium, right? or in this case, we're talking about H+. Right? Just know it exists as a hydrated form of hydronium. So if I want to lower the pH, I have to raise the hydronium concentration. right? So essentially, we're going to look at the mechanism of carbonic anhydrase, but really what I, what I hope to, to help you with is to understand exactly how CO2 raises the proton concentration and therefore drops the pH. Okay? So the first thing we'll look at is we'll look at in the active site, in the active site of, let's do this in orange, in the active site of carbonic anhydrase, we have a zinc 2 plus ion. Now, the zinc 2 plus ion is chelated in there by three histidines, okay? So there's one histidine here, one there, and one there. Now, it's the imidazole nitrogen that doesn't have the proton that's coordinating them. In fact, the coordination of the zinc by these histidines is done by the exact same imidazole nitrogen that it's done through um, with uh, hemoglobin's heme, right? The porphyrin ring, it's the same, or it, it's the, effectively the same imidazole nitrogen that chelates it from the axial position, okay? So it's the same thing in the, um, in the heme of hemoglobin, right? So I'm just abbreviating them now, but, to, but just know for now, throughout the rest of this mechanism, we're gonna exclude the histidine just for the, space, for the sake of space and time, okay? Now the initial step of carbonic anhydrasis mechanism is you're gonna have the binding of water, okay? So water's gonna be allowed into the active site, okay? And for this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all interactions in yellow. Okay, this is not a bond, it's simply an interaction. So recall that oxygen has a partial negative charge, right? That partial negative is able to interact with the positive charge on the zinc, okay? So the yellow line is not a bond, it's just an interaction, okay? So the first step of the mechanism is water gets into the active site. Now, recall that carbonic anhydrase is a reversible reaction, right? It's an equilibrium reaction, it's reversible. So if you have a, a, a reaction that's totally reversible, that means that the, the sum, of, that means all the individual steps that sum to make the reaction have to be reversible as well. So in the mechanism, when you draw the mechanism of a reversible enzyme, you have to make sure that if the enzyme is reversible, you have to show equilibrium errors after each individual step of the mechanism, okay? Now, we're gonna have some base um, in the active site. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna deprotonate here, and that forces the electrons onto the oxygen. So what do we get? Well, we still have the zinc two plus in the active site. Of course, the three, um, three histidines are coordinating it. And then we have hydroxide. Hydroxide now, because we deprotonated the water, right? Oops, that should be a lone pair. We deprotonated there. So now what we have is we have this, right? If, if the base abstracted the proton, right? And actually, let me draw the, the 
proton in blue. Let me do that. If the base subtracted the proton, now the base is in the conjugate acid form, right? This right here, conjugate base form, so now it's the conjugate acid over here in the second step, okay? Now, what's going to happen is the enzyme carbonic anhydrase is going to allow carbon dioxide into the active site, okay? So carbon dioxide I'll put in purple, okay? So here's carbon dioxide, okay? Now we're going to see how... Um, carbonic anhydrase solubilizes carbon dioxide and the way it's going to do it is the hydroxide is going to be it's going to facilitate a nucleophilic attack on this carbon these electrons come out and abstract this proton and it regenerates the base okay recall that from enzymes you have to um, you have to the, the net effect is you have to regenerate the enzymes um, structure right to be an enzyme. To be a catalyst, you can be un you have to be unchanged by the reaction. So even protonation states have to be unchanged, right? So it's important that that base be unchanged. Now, again, we have the zinc, zinc in the active site. I think I chose the wrong color. Oh well. Anyways, but now we still have this interaction, but what happens? Right? So now we have this oxygen, right? Bound to that proton right but now what happens now we're bound to this carbon right and this carbon right here that's this one right then what happens then we have another oxygen that's this one right here and it's bound to what it's bound to the other proton right there's carbonic acid right so this structure right here you get a different color this structure right here is carbonic acid, right? So carbonic acid is, is fairly unstable, okay? It wants to dissociate either back into carbon dioxide and water or into bicarbonate and protons. And depending on what you load the cell up with, or really in this case it's the blood, it, depending on what you load the blood up with, that dictates which direction the equilibrium shifts, okay? Now... What's going to happen is we're going to regenerate um, the original um, the original um, state of the enzyme. Now, if you go back here, you notice that the first step was water binding. Okay, so we're going to have to get water back into the active site. Now, water is going to come in, but there's some important consideration that we have to take. Okay, now the interaction between zinc and carbonic acid is not very strong. Okay. In fact, it's more stable for the zinc to interact with the water than it actually is for the zinc to interact with carbonic acid. So you can effectively think as water acting as a Lewis base. It's going to nucleophilically attack the zinc, and that effectively forces the carbonic acid to dissociate. Okay. Note that this is not electrons moving. This yellow line is not electrons moving. I'm just trying to denote that carbonic acid is leaving. Okay. So what do I generate? Well, I'm going to generate... I'm going to generate bicarbonate. Or excuse me, carbonic acid is going to leave, right? So let me go ahead and draw that. So carbonic acid is going to leave, right? And it's going to look like this, right? Now we're going to see how carbonic acid lowers the pH of the blood. This is where we're going to see it. So carbonic acid, carbonic acid has a lower pKa than water, right? So what happens if you have a lower pKa? you're going to get deprotonated, right? So what happens is water deprotonates here, right? And that forces these electrons in here, and that could possibly kick up here. So what do we generate? Well, I'm going to do this in red. We generate bicarbonate, right? So here is bicarbonate. Again, note the resonance structure, right? You can kick this here, right? That's what I was trying to show with these arrows, right? There's a resonance structure, and then the last thing we generate is hydronium, okay? And it's the hydronium that's directly um, uh, decreasing the pH of the blood, okay? So this is the mechanism of carbonic anhydrase, and this is, of course, how we um, lower the pH with increased carbon dioxide. Now, what we should really show is that... Um, this state right here is, let me make sure I'm drawing it to the right spot. Yeah, this is in equilibrium with this. 
All right, because when I put water in here and it attacks, when it attacks the zinc, carbonic acid leaves, but I regenerate this, right, with water attached. So I regenerate the original starting material for the enzyme, protonation state, and everything, which is a requirement for a catalyst, right? And so this is the mechanism of carbonic anhydrase. And so if I was to give you homework, your homework would be, um, let's say I, I have low carbon dioxide and I have high H3O+. Draw the mechanism of the reverse reaction. So hopefully you can figure that out by looking at carbonic anhydrase's forward mechanism in this case. Hope that video helps. See you in the next video.